the story that I that that is part of my life is uh, like you heard. My sister's daughter was killed in a suicide attack in Jerusalem. It was September 1997. She was 13 years old. This is this is she. And um, you know, personally, of course, when something like this happens, it, it shakes you in a way that you can't even describe in words. But in Israel, this, of course, is big news. It's always big news in Israel when there's when there's a, an act of violence like this. But it was bigger news because this was the granddaughter of a famous general. Now, he had passed away two years before that. Not only was he a famous general, but he was a famous general who became an advocate for Palestinian rights. So this was immense news in Israel. I was living in the U.S. at the time. I took the first plane home. And by the time I reached my sister's apartment, it was full with mourners, but also with reporters from everywhere wanting to, you know, to hear about the story. Um, and when my sister, after the funeral, came out to, to speak to everyone, the questions that come up are always the same questions. You know, who's responsible and what do you think about retaliation and revenge and so on. And the first comment out of her mouth was that no real mother would want to see this happen to any other mother. The idea of retaliation, the idea of killing people in response to the death of someone, besides being repulsive, it's absurd. And she used motherhood saying, you know, motherhood is something that unites all of us. No real mother would want to see this happen to any other mother. Besides, and she was quoting a famous Jewish uh, poet who wrote that there is no vengeance that's appropriate for the death of a child. What do you do, kill a hundred, a thousand, a million? Would that bring the child back? And then she says, in terms of who's responsible, she says, these two young men were brought to a point where they're willing to take their own lives and the lives of other people, innocent civilians. It was the brutal oppression and the brutal occupation that we, the Israelis, have placed upon them that have brought them to the state. When you take away people's land and destroy their homes and put their fathers in jail and shoot their younger siblings in their schools, what do we expect? When you give people no hope, this is what happens. And both she and her husband said, we hold the Israeli government directly responsible for our daughter's death. Netanyahu, by the way, was prime minister there and when he asked to visit the house, they asked him not to come. So now there was, this became even bigger news because this Israeli bereaved family has turned everything upside down. We know the Palestinians are bad, the Israelis are good in the West. It's very simple. We know the Palestinians are terrorists, the Israelis are victims. Israel wants peace, Palestinians don't make concessions. This is what's out there. Suddenly this bereaved Israeli mother is turning everything upside down. And both she and her husband and her, she has three sons, have all become activists and are all talking about this, as I do, um, with a need to, to give people a better understanding of this issue. 